Hi Aquarius. I hope you guys are having a good July. Um, I know the beginning of July was pretty big for you. Um, the thing is, I've been sitting with your energy all morning and I couldn't quite pinpoint what I was feeling, but there is a very real anxiety like sitting in my solar plexus and I think we've talked about this before. Um, you being a natural air sign and um, extremely intelligent, <clears throat> constantly thinking, your brain is always, always, always going. Um, sometimes the fears come up and you can't get them to quiet, which is really interesting because um, I was actually texting a friend of mine and it is retrograde season and it is eclipse season and she very kindly reminded me to stop living um, in like a fear-based past, but at the same time to make fear your friend because we're only human. So we're going to, our egos will always tell us to fear something, even if we know deep down inside that we can do it. Um, which is interesting. Um, and we were talking about the workshops that I'm doing in New York on Friday and then Boston next Friday. And then in August, I'll be in Austin, Texas and Atlanta. Um, if you're interested, all of those links are below if you click on the description box um, underneath the video. Um, I didn't really want to plug that, but it's we were talking about the workshops, and um, I keep on promoting to live without fear. And the thing is, is that's impossible. Being human, and she made it very apparent to me, and this is why I love my friends, and most a lot of my friends these days are clients that have turned into friends, because you are all so fantastic. <laughs> I can't, I'm like surrounded by this wonderful spiritual network now. And um, so living with the fear is okay. It's not letting yourself believe the fear, not letting yourself believe what the fear is telling you, what your ego is telling you that you're not good enough or that you can't push through or when things are going really well, something's bound to happen to where things are going to end up going badly. Um, living without that constant nagging that you're not good enough. That is what humans need to remember, is to embrace the fear and push through it, right? And I kind of feel like that's what the second part of July is for you guys, because you have so many really great things happening. And the first part of July was exciting for you. <clears throat> and this eclipse season, so what I really want you to think about is what was going on during the, because the, the full lunar eclipse will be in your sign. It's during Leo season, but it's in the sign of Aquarius. And when there's a full moon, it's culmination of things, right? Um, and you guys get the extra benefit of it being a full lunar eclipse. Interestingly enough, the full lunar eclipse is happening the night that I'm doing the Boston event. So I already feel like that's going to be a really special night because we're going to be able to release a lot of fear-based thought process that we go through. Um, what I want you guys to think about is what happened during the new moon eclipse in Aquarius during February. Because three of pentacles, I feel like you have been learning so, so much about yourself and about your path and the things that you need to push yourself on, right, the fool, and have faith about. Because what's the point? If we can't believe in ourselves 
and believe that the path that we're taking is catered exactly to us. It's what we wrote in our soul contracts. So believe that where you have come from, from the last eclipse all the way up until now, <clears throat> it is real, it is happening, it is good. And it's a combination of having to end things in your life and starting fresh. Ah, the death card. Having to end things in your life and certain parts of your and it's funny because people will be like, oh my gosh, the death card. Don't be afraid of the death card. It's about transformation. But it is, it is a very real fear, that transformation. A very real fear of knowing that things have to end. You could have a Scorpio in your life that you kind of want to have a fresh start with, too. You're like, I kind of want to rebuild this. Um, the Fool represents you. It is the sign of Aquarius. It is evolution. Um, the death card is evolution. We all have to evolve. And you guys have been evolving so much with Uranus going into another sign, um, which is your leading planet, you know, your one of your ruling planets. And with um, all of these eclipses happening within your sign, of course the transformation is real. Of course the transformation is real. It's the fear-based thoughts of, is this really happening? Am I really good enough to get this new job or to be in this new relationship? Um, and it's also knowing that you're good enough to not stay in a situation that's no longer serving you. And not constantly forcing the issue. My nose is now itching. Knight of Pentacles. <clears throat> if things have been going, if you feel like you're in slow motion, it is retrograde season. Um, I feel like I've been in slow motion a lot, but I've also been forcing myself to rest a lot more than I normally would. Things are starting to pick up a little bit and get a little better, and a lot of that was because Jupiter went direct in Scorpio. But um, knowing you have that fire within you and you're being told to chill out. I think we talked about this in June also. Because there is kind of like that, that, there's that push of wanting, you know, you want to push forward. You want to move forward. You want to get things done. You want to get going. <clears throat> And it's like a fight to do it. Yeah, it's a fight to get to what you want, right? Nine of Cups and the Emperor. You cannot control, especially since Mars is retrograde right now, um, you can manifest the things that you want, sit in a high vibration and say, I am so grateful for everything that I have right now. And these are the things that I'm going to work towards. And these are the things I want from the universe. You can manifest that into the Nine of Cups and have those wishes. But you can't control the timing of it. And that's why this Knight of Pentacles is, you have to, rem I actually like the Knight of Pentacles energy. Um, but then again, I'm a Virgo. So I like things to be very methodical, very thought out, very stable, step by step. So... Um, because that's what the Knight of Pentacles represents. Yes, it feels slow. Yes, it feels stagnant, but it's also very stable energy. It is moving forward. It's just not the Knight of Wands where it's like passionately coming in really fast and then leaving really fast. It's not the Knight of Swords where it's like discord everywhere. It's not the Knight of Cups full of emotions, right? It's, Stable, grounded, step by step. So the reality of this transition that's happening, you can feel it. 
you're just like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Let's clarify a couple of these, and then we'll look at the bottom of the deck. I want to know what the fool, what is this new venture that you're on? What is, I feel like a lot of the fool is saying to have faith in yourself during transitional times. Um, know that even if things have to end, new beginnings are always right around the corner. See, there you are. The King of Swords. And let's not get caught up in the gender because this is general. Thousands of people have watched this. But having a lot of faith in yourself, having a lot of faith, and the thing is, is you guys have been learning so much, the Three of Pentacles, and you have a crew to do it with. You're not only the student, but you're the teacher. People are teaching you, and you are teaching them. And that's the beauty of it. But you have to remember during this time to have faith in yourself. And I think that we are always having this conversation to have faith in yourself. Because I understand the air quality of getting up in your head and staying there and not believing in the choices that you're making or not believing in the direction that you're going. Just because bad things happen in your life. I mean, like... Living a spiritual life doesn't mean everything's going to be peachy all the time. Living a spiritual life is still reality. It's still very real. Bad things happen. It's how you react to those bad things. It's how you learn the lesson within those things that happen. That is where when you are fear-based and you're like, yes, but things are going poorly in my life. Like, I'm on a down slope. You talked about... You know, like Betsy, you talked about the glow of being real and all these really great things happening and not seeing the great things. But are you just focused on the negative? Because if you're so focused on the negative and things that are ending and you're not having faith that there's a beginning right behind it, that's what the cards are saying. Because you've learned so much about yourself that now that the transition is happening... You know, you went through all of the steps to get to where you are right now. And now that it's actually happening, now you're going to be scared. Now you're going to fear it. <clears throat> this is just another doorway opening up. So many gifts and opportunities that you wanted, that you wanted to happen. So, <clears throat> let's see, what is this death card? Two of Pentacles. Are you trying to decide what to do with the Scorpio? Or are you trying to decide where your transition is leading you? Let's clarify the Two of Pentacles. I'm curious about your decision. What decisions you have to make. Knight of Swords. Um, don't rush into it. Even if you feel kind of rushed right now, or you feel like you have to make a decision right now, I want you to not have the Knight of Swords energy, but have the Knight of Pentacles energy, which is really difficult for an air sign to do sometimes. Uh, the Emperor, is this, um, a, is this an issue? Is the trying to control the way things go or look in the future, is that an issue for you? It is, actually. I feel like the more you try and control what happens in the future, the more confused you're going to be, the more blocked you're going to be. The Nine of Wands and the Seven of Cups on the Emperor. You could be um, fighting with an Aries and not really sure what to do about it. Or you could be fighting with your own control issues and not really sure what to do about it. Because you know what you want. And, yes, I can totally, and you could be fighting with the Mars energy that's in retrograde right now. Because that Mars energy, it's kicking my butt, too. 
I would rather things be moving forward already. Can we go back to January where everything went direct? Life was on track. <laughs> Seriously. So, um, be patient with what's coming because you can't control the, you, if you try and control the progress of your wishes and hopes and dreams coming, it's just going to keep blocking you from it. So, bottom of the deck, the King of Cups and the Chariot, Ten of Swords, the Magician, the High Priestess, Four of Wands, and the Four of Cups. I feel like you're really, really done with a certain person in your life or a certain situation in your life. Could be a water sign. We do have Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio here with the King of Cups. So, water, very prominent. Um, the thing is, the thing is, see, I feel like you're still kind of going back and forth about this ending. I think that you could probably end it at any time you wanted to. and then manifest something very stable in your life. And I feel like you're kind of, the thing is, is you're go, you keep going back and forth about, and this doesn't have to be in a relationship. This could be in any area of your life. Um, you keep going back and forth about the decision that you need to make to end something, to cut something out of your life. Um, and the thing is, I feel like you need to. I feel like there's something, because the manifestation qualities that you have to bring something very stable, four of wands stable in your life, is very, very real. I mean, we have the magician and the high priestess, and these guys work hand in hand. One of them uses their intuition, the other one uses all the tools in front of him to make things happen. But to me, this looks like very, very quickly, something ending very, very quickly. And you're almost not upset about it. Because you know that if this end or this situation, whatever this situation is, first of all, it happened in divine timing, came when it was supposed to. Second of all, it might feel really, really devastating but you know that there's good stuff behind it. And this is the fear, though. You're afraid that it's going to end up totally devastating for you and all involved. Or once it's over, it's over. And there's, like, nothing left to pick up, right? I have the Four of Cups at, at the bottom here. And so I kind of want to tell you to... Sit on it. Don't rush into anything, especially right now during retrograde season and eclipse season. Um, I always tell people, like, if you have to wrap up cer certain circumstances because you're very super confused by it, um, I feel like if there were to be an argument, like, something happens in the heat of the moment, and you try and control it where you're like, nope, I'm done. I'm com totally and completely done. Like, don't fly off the handle and just end something because there was an argument or something didn't go your way. And if this has happened time and time and time again, then, of course, like, come to a culmination point and realize that you don't need to deal with this over and over and over again. Because I do feel like you've been dealing with the same person consistently. But I want you to make it happen to where it's a stable ending. Because I feel like if things were in a more stable, went in a more stable direction where it ended, 
whatever situation this is. Um, like, for example, if you are so sick of the job that you're in and you want to get a new job, instead of just up and quitting one day because you're so sick of everybody, make sure you're putting in your two weeks. Make sure. I feel like there's kind of a warning here that you have really good things coming to you and you need to have faith that that stuff is coming, but don't, don't make the decision in a spur of the moment. I feel like that's the warning. I feel like if the decision is made in a spur of the moment, then it could possibly be devastating. That's what I was trying to get across. And for some reason, I kept going. And I feel like that's what's happening is you guys keep going around and around and around in a circle about whatever decision you need to make. Um, if something has led up to you making this decision, do it in a stable way. I keep using my hands. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to beat that with it. I'm not going to keep beating that, that down. I'm just not. Over and over. And I feel like there's a message in there for somebody you needed to hear it. Somebody needed to hear that. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, don't click off really, qu really quick. I wanted to update everybody. I do have email readings available. Again, there's only a limited number. Make sure when you order the email reading, you email me at spirituallyfearless1111 at gmail.com. Email me your question and your sign and whoever else is involved, <clears throat> their first name and their sign. Um, make sure you do that so it's not delayed. It will take 10 to 14 days to get your reading to you after ordering, maybe earlier than that, but it will not be any longer than two weeks. I'm trying to do it before two weeks, but during this time, but I have had so many people ask me um, if I could do email readings again, so I'm just putting a limited number of those out there. And soulmate readings, I do have some soulmate readings available on my website. Also, Boston and New York tickets, the event Bright Leaks are below. I'll be in New York this Friday, Boston next Friday. In-person readings are available on my website. They are um, already in, like, in the time frames. So um, go check that out for both weekends. Um, I still have like three, I think, for New York. Um, and... Maybe two. Maybe there's only two sp spots left for New York. I know Sunday has two spots left. Um, and then Boston, I think I have like five spots left for next weekend. So go check it out. I would love to meet everybody. I'm really, really excited about these workshops. They're going to be a lot of fun. Um, and as always, go to my website, fearlessintuition.net. Um, you can email me also if you have any questions about anything. I love you guys. Bye.